Chapter 1 Macromolecules In this chapter, the subtopic that we are going to cover are functional groups, water, introduction to macromolecules, amino acids, peptides and proteins, structures and function of carbohydrates, structure and functions of lipids, and also the last one, structure and functions of nucleic acids. The four major groups of macromolecules, which are proteins, DNA or nucleic acids, carbohydrates and also lipids, the main component or the atoms within these uh, macromolecules are hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphate. These atoms within the molecule or uh, molecules uh, between another molecules are held together by chemical bonds. These are the different types of chemical bonds that we are going to look at, which are covalent bond, ionic bond, hydrogen bond, hydrophobic interactions, and also van der Waals interaction. Electronegativity. Electronegativity is an atom's affinity or attractions for electrons. The more electronegative an atom is, the more strongly it pulls shared elect electrons towards it. Let's look at the type of chemical bond. The first one is covalent bond. Covalent bond involves sharing of a pair of electrons by two atoms within a molecule. And this results in no unpaired electrons. The strength depends on the number of shared electrons between the atoms. And then uh, the, uh, this results in uh, a single, double or triple covalent bonds that are formed between the atoms within the molecule. So it means that uh, there will be one, two or three shared pairs of electron between the atoms within, within a molecule. Let's look at example in this table. The first one here, as you can, can see, is hydrogen gas, H2. So as we know, hydrogen atom has one electron valence. So this has to, uh, this uh, one electron valence has, has to satisfy the octet rule where this electron will be shared with another electron of another hydrogen atom. Okay, so the sharing of these two electrons will result in one covalent bonds that are formed between the hydrogen, the hydrogen atoms within this hydrogen uh, molecule. The second example here is oxygen molecule O2. As we know, oxygen atom will have six electron valence, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so this six electron valence has to satisfy the octet rule where it has to find another two electrons. Okay, another two electrons. So this oxygen atom will share two pairs, okay, two pairs of electrons with each other to form double covalent bond okay double covalent bond as uh, for the next example is the formation of covalent bond between oxygen and and also hydrogen atoms within a water molecule within this water molecule the two electron valence of of the hydro of oh, sorry the two electron valence of electrons within the oxygen within the oxygen atom will share two electrons from two hydrogen atoms okay so this form covalent bonds within oxygen and also hydrogen atoms within the water molecule and then the last one is methane ch4 ch4 carbon atom will have four electron valence Okay, four electron valence and each of these electron will share electron with another hydrogen atom. Okay, so this form covalent bonds between the carbon atoms and also four hydrogen atoms within the methane uh, molecule. Like this one here. Okay. Two types of covalent bond. The first one is nonpolar covalent bond. For example, we have two hydrogen atoms within a hydrogen molecule. As we know, hydrogen atom will have one electron valence. This one electron 
will be shared with another electron of another hydrogen atom to form a covalent bond. So this means that these two hydrogen atoms, the hydrogen atoms will have the same electronegativity. Or it involves equal sharing of electrons between these two hydrogen atoms. The second type of covalent bond is polar covalent bond. For example, the formation of covalent bonds within oxygen and also hydrogen atoms of, of a water molecule. Okay, so as we know, uh, oxygen will have six electron valence. Okay, so this oxygen atom has to satisfy the octet rule where it has to find another two electrons. So the, the other two electron is obtained from the sharing of electron uh, of, uh, of hydrogen uh, and this electron of the hydrogen will, will, attract, will be attracted more to the oxygen atom as the oxygen atom is more electronegative. Okay, so the electron of the hydrogen atom will be attracted more to the oxygen atom as the oxygen atom is more electronegative and this results in unequal sharing of electrons between the oxygen uh, between the oxygen and also hydrogen atom within within the water molecule and usually water is a polar molecule and this results in uh, in the water molecule being polar okay water is a polar molecule due to this unequal sharing of electrons as the results of the formation of polar covalent bonds between the oxygen and also hydrogen atoms within a water molecule, this causes the water molecule to be a polar molecule. So this means that the oxygen region of a, uh, of a water molecule will have partial negative charge. And the hydrogen region of, uh, of a water molecule will have partial positive charge. This partial positive and also negative charge on the water molecule will cause the water molecule to form hydrogen bonds with another polar molecule. And as for the second example here, the molecule of ethane, the atoms are held together by none polar covalent bonds okay as the results of equal sharing of electrons between the atoms uh, within this ethane molecule carbon has four electron valence where it has to share electrons with with uh, with another atoms okay so in this case ethane uh, the carbon will share electrons with hydrogen Carbon will share electrons with another hydrogen and also another hydrogen atom. And the carbon also share electron with another carbon in this molecule to satisfy the octet rule. And this forms the covalent bond within the carbons, carbons within hydrogens of the ethane molecule. Okay, so all these atoms will have the same electronegativity. And this results in ethane being a nonpolar molecule. The second type of chemical bond is ionic bond. Ionic bond is formed due to the chemical attraction between cation and an anion. A cation is an ion that have positive charge and as for a, uh, an anion is the ion that have a negative charge. For example, here we have a sodium atom that has one electron valence. This electron uh, atom will lose an electron to become sodium ion. The chlorine atoms here will have to satisfy the octet rule by gaining an electron to become negatively charged, Cl negative. So therefore, losing an electron will cause an atom to become positively charged. Gaining an electron will cause an atom to be negatively charged. These opposite charges between sodium ion and chloride ion is linked by ionic bond to form an ionic compound. So therefore, your uh, your table salt is sodium chloride, okay, which is an ionic compound. The third type of chemical bond is hydrogen bond. 
Hydrogen bond are uh, basically a weak attractive force existing between hydrogen atom with partial positive charge and an electronegative atom such as for example nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine atom of another molecule. Hydrogen bond uh, basically it forms between two molecules that are polar. For example here as we can see in this diagram it gives you the structure of a water molecule. Water molecule as we know it is polar. It has two regions the oxygen region of the water molecule that have partial negative charge. The hydrogen region of the water molecule have partial positive charge. Okay, so this region of a water molecule that have partial positive charge, which is at the hydrogen uh, atom region, will form hydrogen bond with another molecule of which that other molecule have an electronegative atom, in this case for example ammonia, NH3. The nitrogen atom here is more electronegative. Electronegative. So the nitrogen region of, um, of ammonia, it has partial negative charge. So the partial negative charge on the nitrogen region of ammonia will be attracted to the hydrogen atom region of water molecule that has partial positive charge to form hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonds basically it forms between two molecules that, that are attracted to one another due to the presence of partial positive and partial negative charge. Okay, so individually this hydrogen ion is weak but when they exist in large numbers the interaction that are formed between hydrogen bonds are very strong okay so another example here as you can see the formation of hydrogen bonds between water molecules in this case between two water molecules so the oxygen region of a water molecule that has partial negative charge will be attracted to the hydrogen region of another water molecule that has partial positive charge and this forms hydrogen bond Remember, whenever you want to draw a hydrogen bond, you always draw the hydrogen bonds with dotted line. So dotted line connecting two atoms of, uh, of these two molecules, it forms a hydrogen bond. If you draw hydrogen bonds using a straight line, so that would be wrong because, because a straight line indicating uh, the bond is a covalent bond. Okay, so the fourth type is hydrophobic interaction. Hydrophobic interaction are interaction between nonpolar or hydrophobic molecules in a polar solvent, usually water. Or for example, within a cell, the environment of within a cell is aqueous. Okay, aqueous, it has water. So for example here, the mixing of fats. So fats, as we know, it is nonpolar. Okay, it is nonpolar molecule that uh, exists in water, which is polar. Okay, so at uh, on the diagram uh, here, uh, the the diagram on the bottom here, as you can see, there are fats molecule. So the water molecule surround uh, will surround will surround the fat molecule, and then you have another fat molecule that has water surrounding the fat molecule. So when you uh, put together this fat molecule into one um, place, okay, into one uh, area, so this fat molecule will be attracted to one another through the formation of hydrophobic interaction. Okay, so this region of the fat will be isolated from water. Okay, will be isolated from water. Another example, uh, another common example for uh, here you have. Um, Phospholipid molecules. Okay, phospholipid molecule, as we know, it has two regions, which is the hydrophobic tail and the hydrophilic head. Hydrophobic, uh, the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tail. So this hydrophobic tail of the phospholipid molecule will be attracted to one another. Okay, through hydrophobic interaction. 
Okay, so this region here of the of the hydrophobic tails of the phospholipid molecules will form interaction, which is the hydrophobic interaction. Okay, and the uh, and the hydrophilic region of the phospholipid molecule will uh, will be attracted to water molecule to the aqueous surrounding. Okay, the hydrophilic region of water will be isolated from water okay so the interaction between the hydrophobic tails we call it as uh, hydrophobic interaction another example given here is you you can see this is a polypeptide chain okay a polypeptide chain which are the monomers composed of amino acids Okay, composed of amino acids. So there are several types of amino acid depending on the side chain of the amino acids. So there are amino acids that are uh, polar. For example, if the side chain have a hydroxyl group, uh, sorry, uh, have hydroxyl group, there are amino acids that are non-polar. If the uh, uh, side chain have a CH3 uh, or methane group, C, uh, composed of um, hydrocarbons okay there are uh, charged uh, amino acids for example the one that have um, amino amino group or uh, carboxylic group COO negative okay so uh, so uh, given in this example this polypeptide chain will fall into a specific shape so the folding of the polypeptide into specific shape is due to the interaction between the side chain of the amino acid. Okay, between the side chain of the amino acid. So this one amino acid, for example, it has um, hydrocarbons. Okay, hydrocarbon CH3, CH3. So the, the, the side chains are nonpolar. Okay, nonpolar. Non and then it meets with another amino acid that also have nonpolar side chain so this non-polar side chain of the amino acid will be attracted to one another through hydrophobic interaction okay and causes the polypeptide chain to fold into a specific shape we are going to look at uh, the polypeptide in detail in the uh, in the other sub uh, subtopic within this uh, chapter which is protein and the last one is van der waals interaction Van der Waals interactions are weak attractive forces between atoms caused by interaction among fluctuating charges within atoms of molecules. Individually, Van der Waals interaction is weak but occurs and occurs when atoms and molecules are very close together. For example, here we can see hydrogen molecule that consists of two hydrogen atoms. So there is no electronegativity difference. It means that the two hydrogen atoms have the same uh, electronegativity. Okay, the two the two hydrogen atoms. So therefore, uh, they are nonpolar. Okay, the hydrogen molecule is nonpolar and do not have a dipole. It uh, the the hydrogen molecule does not have any charge or partial charges, but when two hydrogen molecules are put next to one another, you have two hydrogen molecules in this case that are put next to one another, that are near to one another. A dipole is induced because electrons rearrange themselves. Okay, so this is because electrons are not always evenly distributed. The electrons, as you can see in the animation, they uh, they can uh, move okay from one region to another region uh, of the uh, of the at uh, of the atom okay so at an instant they may accumulate by chance in one part of a molecule or another so the results are ever changing okay ever changing as you can see in the animation the results are ever changing region of positive and negative charge that enable all atoms and molecules to stick to one another through the formation of van der Waals interaction. In this table, it shows you a summary of all the bonds and interaction that we have looked at. The first one is covalent bond, which is formed due to the sharing of electron pairs between atoms in a molecule. For example, in a water molecule, oxygen shares electron with two hydrogen atoms. 
okay in a water molecule the second uh, is ionic bond ionic bond is formed between the attraction of oppositely charged charge uh, charge ions such as uh, between sodium ion and chloride ion to form sodium chloride uh, the next one is uh, hydrogen bond hydrogen bond is formed between partially positive charge partially positive hydrogen atom of one molecule and a partially negative uh, atom of another polar molecule to form polar covalent bonds okay for example hydrogen bonds are formed between two water molecules um, and then the third one is hydrophobic interaction or hydrophobic exclusion which is uh, the hydrophobic interaction forms between nonpolar or hydrophobic molecule so this nonpolar or hydrophobic molecule are attracted to one another and uh, and uh, the the two the two hydrophobic molecule will be isolate, isolated or excluded from from the surrounding water and then the last one is uh, van der Waals interaction so van der Waals interaction is weak attraction between atoms due to the opposite uh, polarized electron clouds okay so um, hydrogen bonds hydrophobic interaction and van der Waals interactions are the bonds or interaction that occurs between uh, different molecules okay between atoms of different molecules uh, hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interaction and van der Waals interaction falls under non-covalent uh, bond. Okay. Okay, so the next uh, part we are going to look at isomers. Isomers are basically compounds with the same molecular formula. They have the same molecular formula but different structures and properties. Okay, so the first type of isomers uh, are structural isomers. Structural isomers are molecules that have different covalent arrangement of the atoms within the molecule. For example, we have uh, glucose, a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule. Glucose and fructose have the same molecular formula. They have six carbon, basically one, one, two, three, four, five and six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 6 carbon. So the molecular formula will be uh, the same. C6H12O6. But the arrangement of atoms are different. So they have different structural uh, arrangement. Okay. So, uh, so they form different molecules. Glucose and fructose. Okay. Glucose and fructose are actually structural isomers. The next type of uh, isomers is uh, cis trans isomers. These are isomers that have same covalent arrangement but differ in spatial arrangement. Cis isomers, uh, in this case, the two axes or chemical groups are on the same side of the carbons, the, uh, the two carbons that is bonded through um, a double covalent bond okay so the hydrogen as you can see the hydrogen atoms are on the same side the two axes are on the same side also for example this oleic acid the carbons that are bonded through double bond the hydrogen atoms that is uh, bonded to the two carbons are on the same side the chemical groups that are bonded to the carbon that has a double bond is also on the same side okay so uh, so the uh, same side for uh, for trans isomers the two axes are on the opposite sides for example elytic acid okay so this is the carbons that are bonded through double uh, double covalent bond so the hydrogens are on the opposite side same goes to the chemical groups that are bonded to the carbon that has double bond they are on the opposite side okay they are on the opposite side these are called as cis trans isomers so for uh, that is for the cis trans isomers okay the last uh, isomers is enantiomers enantiomers are isomers that are mirror images of each other so we have here uh, these two molecules the d glucose and the l glucose 
Okay, the arrangement of atoms of this D and L glucose, they mirror image each other. L stand for levo in Latin, it is left. Okay, as for D, it is dextro in Latin, which is right. Okay. Functional groups. Chemical groups or functional groups. Functional group is a group of atoms that give distinctive properties of an organic molecule to which it is attached. There are several, several different types of uh, functional group. The first one is hydroxyl, OH. Second is carbonyl, C double bond O. Next is carboxyl, COOH. And then amino, NH2. Sulfhydryl, SH, phosphate, PO4, 2 negative, and then methyl, CH3. All these functional groups are bonded or attached to an organic molecule. The first functional group is hydroxyl, OH, which is bonded to another molecule. Molecule having hydroxyl group, we call it as alcohol. For example, this ethanol, which is alcohol present in alcoholic beverages. Hydroxyl group is polar as the result of electrons spending more time near the electronegative oxygen atom and causing the hydrogen atom to, be, to have a partial positive charge. So, so therefore, this uh, hydroxyl group can form hydrogen bonds with water molecule which is polar helping to dissolve organic compounds such as sugar okay for example that uh, what i've drawn here is um, the structure of a glucose molecule which is a six carbon sugar each of these carbon is bonded to a hydroxyl group okay so having so many hydroxyl group uh, uh, causes the sugar molecule or the glucose molecule to be polar and can form hydrogen bonds with water molecule and so therefore sugar can dissolve in water. The second functional group is carbonyl, C double bond O. There are two types of compound based on the location of the position of the carbonyl group within the molecule. The first one is ketone and the second one is aldehydes. Okay? Ketones, if the carbonyl group is within a carbon skeleton, usually the carbonyl group has, is uh, located at carbon number 2. Aldehyde, if the carbonyl group is at the end of the carbon skeleton, usually at carbon number 1. For example, here we have uh, an example of ketone, which is acetone. As you can see, the carbonyl group is located at carbon number 2. 1, 2. The next uh, uh, example is for aldehyde where the position of the carbonyl group is located at carbon number 1 for propanol. So therefore, by looking at the structures, you can see that the location of the carbonyl gr uh, group is different, either at carbon number 1 or carbon number 2. So, these two uh, ketone and aldehyde can be considered as structural isomers. Acetone and propanol, they have the same molecular formula but different structures. So these two groups are also found in sugars, giving rise to uh, two major groups of sugar which is aldoses and ketoses. Okay? So aldoses uh, which uh, is aldehyde and ketoses is ketone. Aldose sugar the, uh, the carbonyl group is located at carbon number 1. Ketosis, the carbonyl group is located at carbon number 2 or in the middle of the carbon skeleton. The next functional group is carboxyl, COOH, C double bond, OH. The compound have, having carboxyl is, uh, is called as carboxylic acids or organic acids. Example is acetic acid which gives vinegar its sour taste. So this is the uh, structural formula for acetic acid. 
and then uh, carboxyl has acidic properties because the covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen is very polar here the the uh, the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is very polar so when the carboxylic acid is in aqueous solution uh, or in cell okay or in cell the carboxylic acid will be ionized okay it will be ionized releasing hydrogen atom into the surrounding solution uh, it uh, become hydrogen ions okay it forms hydrogen ions uh, it uh, it adds hydrogen ion into the surrounding solution causing the ph of the surrounding solution to uh, to drop okay so this will give the acidic properties um so the so it will ionize from cooh to become coo negative okay so it will form a charge of negative one okay or a carboxylate ion the next group is amino group and h2 the molecule having amino group we call it is uh, we call it uh, as amide for example is uh, glycine glycine is a type of amino acid okay so uh, all amino acid will have an amino group bonded to uh, this carbon and the carbon is also bonded to another uh, functional group which is a carboxyl group so amino acid has both amino group and carboxyl group in this case is glycine so um, and uh, uh, an amino group has uh, has uh, basic properties okay it acts as a base uh, it can pick up hydrogen ion from the surrounding solution uh, such as water in living organism so within cell there are so many amino acids okay so these amino acids if the uh, if within the cell is acidic the ph is acidic okay so the the within the cell it has so many hydrogen ion so the amino acid will take up uh, will take up the hydrogen ions okay so um uh, so the the amino acid can also uh, be uh, be considered as a ph buffer okay so uh, uh so this is the amino group uh, in the non ionized form which is nh2 okay nh2 and uh, and uh, it easily uh, become ionized by accepting another hydrogen ion within the uh, aqueous solution okay to become nh3 plus from nh2 okay it becomes n h3 plus adding another hydrogen to the uh, to the uh, nitrogen atom the next group is sulfhydryl group sh a molecule having sulfhydryl group we call it as thiol example here is cysteine cysteine is actually an amino acid that the side chain contains sulfhydryl group Remember, amino acid have both amino group and also carboxy group. But in the case of cysteine, this uh, the side chain has sulfhydryl group also. Two sulfhydryl groups can react, forming a covalent bond. This cross-linking helps stabilize protein structures. Cross-linking of cysteine in hair proteins maintain the curliness or straightness of hair. Straight hair can be permanently curled if shaping it around curlers, then breaking and reforming the cross-linking bonds. So this cross-linking between cysteine, we call it as disulfide bridge. For example, okay, so we have a polypeptide chain which consists of many amino acids that are linked together by peptide bond. All amino acids have side chain. So in the case of cysteine, for example, okay, so let's consider this amino acid is cysteine. Okay, cysteine. And then this amino acid here is also cysteine. Along the polypeptide chain. So the cysteine, the cysteine uh, side chain have sulfur. And this also have sulfur, sulfhydryl group. Okay, so 
uh, a bond can be formed between the sulfur of the side chain of the two amino acids. Okay, so so the hydrogen will be removed and left with uh, sulfur being bond bonded together uh, to form the cross linking between the amino acids along the polypeptide chain. So this is what we call it as disulfide bridge, holding the polypeptide chain together into uh, into a uh, fold into a specific shape here. Phosphate group. Okay, so you have a phosphate bonded to four oxygen atom. So the molecular formula will be PO4 2 negative. A molecule having a phosphate group, we call it as organic phosphate. For example, is uh, glycerol phosphate. In, in addition to taking part in many uh, important chemical reaction in cell, glycerol phosphate provides also for the backbone of phospholipid which is the main component of plasma membrane. Example here, another example is uh, here is uh, an ATP molecule, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so as we know, ATP is energy, energy currency of cell. So this ATP molecule, as you can see, it has um, uh, five carbon sugar bonded to three phosphate. Okay, so the bond that holds together uh, the three phosphate has a high energy. Okay, high energy bonds. So the uh, if the phosphate uh, group is located at the end of the phosphate chain, it will have two negative charge. As for the phosphate that is located internally within the phosphate chain, it has one negative charge. Okay, so the breaking of bond between the phosphate will, will release will release energy. And this energy will be used by cell to do cellular activities. The last functional group is methyl. The molecular formula for methyl is CH3. A compound having methyl group, we call it as methylated compound. For example, here is 5-methylcysteine, which is a component of DNA that has been modified by the addition of methyl group to the uh, base cysteine. Um, the functional properties of methyl group, uh, for example, uh, addition of a methyl group to DNA or to molecule bound to DNA will affect gene, uh, gene expression. Arrangement of methyl groups to male and female sex hormone will affect the hormone shape and function. Okay, so this is the end of uh, the first part of chapter 1.